Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Surprise, surprise! There's another card in town, and again, like with all these launches, your sub box is probably filled with heaps of videos talking about them. So thank you for taking the time out to check out our video first or last, or whichever order you watch them in, I, I don't know. Anyway, this has probably, again, been the worst kept secret of all time, kind of like the 3060 Ti. And with that said, Gigabyte sent over this, the RTX 3060 Eagle for us to check out. We decided to do our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux to see how this tiny little card stacks up against other GPUs that we've had through the studio. So let's check it out. To kick this off, we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you're gonna be able to buy one of these cards anytime soon or at launch, but the launch date is right now. And I really have to stress this, but Oh, I have no idea if you're gonna be able to buy these at launch again. And I don't know if this is gonna make me look stupid, but yeah, it's just it's just the way it is. I gotta do what I gotta do. And it seems as though these stock shortages because of all of these numerous factors, which I'm not gonna go into right now. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to be realistic with this video. Whether you can get it or not is not up to me. Don't get your hopes up. Uh, yeah, just don't get your hopes up at all. And if I'm wrong, uh, and you can actually get these cards at launch, I'll admit it, but given what I know and what I've seen so far, it doesn't look very likely. And with that said, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video. There are chapters in all of our videos, so if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video to see a certain benchmark or something that I'm talking about, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar down below. Uh, on the, the, the timeline thing of a jig, and there's timestamps in the description as well. Also, make sure you watch this whole video to get the context of what we're trying to say about this GPU as well. And there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna be talking about, and these are the out of the box figures as well. We're gonna revisit overclocking in about a week or so when we do our 3060 roundup. We've got a couple of cards that we wanna show you guys, and I can already anticipate other content floating around that's gonna be showing different hash rates for mining. And honestly, I'm just not really interested in all the crypto nerfs with this card that NVIDIA's talked about. I'm just, sorry, it's just not my cup of tea. All right, let's get these benchmarks comparisons out of the way first. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of all the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database of GPUs that we've tested since the start of 30 series and with all the new Radeon stuff as well. And we kind of selected a chunk of GPUs that this kind of sits between. Now the graphs change because all these cards perform differently and some cards get knocked off the graphs, which is why they're different for each video. We also use our regular test bench hardware for all of these tests to give you guys accurate results based on everything that we've ever tested since the launch of all these new rating cards and the new 30 series stuff. We also went back and retested everything, so everything's up to par. As far as all of our 3060 testing, Nvidia's uh, really saying that this is a replacement for a 1060, but I don't have any 1060s anymore. I gave my last one away to a family member a few months ago, so too bad. There's nothing I can do about it. Anyway, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magical little pause button down below at any time during the video to take a look at the graphs for a bit longer. Let's see what's happening here. The first thing you're probably noticing is the 3060 is a single frame faster than the 2070 Super. This is not the trend with this GPU. In Linux, where Shadow of the Tomb Raider typically performs better at 1080p, the story is completely different. The 3060 is faster than the 2070. When we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing Windows performs better. This is most likely because of the drivers. In a few days, once proper drivers are out for Linux, we're gonna retest all of this and do another follow-up with all of these 3060 cards. At 1440p, we're seeing the 3060 perform slightly faster than the 2070 and more surprisingly coming in just behind the 1080 Ti Founders Edition. At 1440p in Linux, the 3060 is two frames faster than the 2070, which is the trend with this particular benchmark, but again, it's not telling the whole story with this GPU yet. Again, if we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing the Linux performance come in behind Windows. When we get better drivers, we are definitely going to be retesting this. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 3060 once again come out on top of the 2070, but the margin is pretty small here. At 4K in Linux, the 2070 and 3060 are on par with each other. Realistically, you're not gonna be using the 3060 for 4K, but it is a nice metric for us to test against. If we compare Windows to Linux at 4K, we're seeing that Windows is out on top again. 
Okay, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We sometimes get comments uh, along the lines of kernel versions and OpenGL versus DX11. We're comparing the out of the box experiences only. Let's get it. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the 3060 Eagle come in behind the 2070 and the 5700 XT. In Linux, the OpenGL version doesn't perform as well and that's just how it is with Linux regardless of the kernel or the driver being used, but we're seeing the 3060 beat out the 2070 by a single frame here. If we compare Windows to Linux, the difference isn't as large as we expected with it only being around a 3 frame per second difference. At 1440p in Windows, the 3060 is considerably slower than the 2070. In Linux though, the 3060 is a single frame faster than the 2070. This is only a negligible difference though. If we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing Windows outperforming Linux by about 10 frames. At 4K, we're seeing the 3060 come in behind the 2070 by about 5 frames a second. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing the 3060 actually beat the 2070 by 3 frames. If we compare both Windows and Linux, Windows is coming out on top once again. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and for Linux as well. At 1080p, we're seeing the 3060 performance around the same as the 2070. In Linux, the 3060 pushes itself way up the graph to even outperform the 1080 Ti founders and also the 2070 Super. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the 3060 sitting a single frame behind the 2070. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed with the 3060 clawing its way up the graph to perform slightly better than the 2070 Super. And finally at 4K, we're seeing Windows and Linux echo the performance we saw at other resolutions, being that we see the 3060 claw its way higher in Linux. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark and we couldn't get the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Eagle above 61 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. And this result is actually a whole lot better than I expected given how small the cooler is on this card. It's actually not that big at all. And be aware though that we run all these tests on an open air test bench, so the results in a closed system will definitely be different from whatever we showed here. And we include this result because our open air test environment is consistent and we test everything this way across the board. So it's always the same parameters. As far as power consumption, we observed that hitting a board power draw, maxing out at 169 watts at full load over the period of one hour. This is a single watt less than the reference spec of the 3060, which is 170 watts. So it's good to see that this one's actually quite close to the mark. We also observed the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Eagle to have a silent operation over our testing period as well with zero coil wind. And you have to remember this is again an open air test system so we hear absolutely everything and you're not going to hear this card even in a closed system. Now the reason why we do it this way and not give you numbers is because it's way too confusing. Acoustic observations make heaps more sense for people who don't understand those numbers. So regular punters, I got you. And these acoustic tests are only tangible if the card's sitting next to you anyway, so a number on a screen most likely won't make any sense to you. Now I'm liking the overall size of this card too. It's a relatively small two slot card that measures around 24 centimeters in length. It's not super long, it's a nice size. I like building with cards this size because they're so much more versatile. You can put them in smaller systems and I suspect that people who buy these cards will most likely be putting them in small systems anyway. As far as RGB, it's the same story here as the other Eagle cards that we've seen so far. The logo is the only section of the card that's illuminated. For power connectors, there's a single eight pin PCIe power connector. And I can tell you for a fact that this is actually not the case with all 3060s. They're not all created equally in this regard. We've got a bunch more to cover over the next 
next week, so stay tuned for all that. Okay, as far as pricing, I'm not even gonna bother talking about it because the truth is, <laughs> whatever price I say now, is gonna be wrong. And if you watch it in the future, the prices are probably gonna be more decent than what they are now. And I could probably recommend this card at the price from future Nick, but the price that I'm showing on screen right now is just not very accessible at launch. And I feel like it's really unfair to you guys to recommend this card right now. I'm gonna be honest, the 3060 is just a really weird card. 12 gigs of VRAM on a card that either is or isn't slower than a 2070. It has more VRAM than a 3080. It just kind of feels like this weird knee-jerk reaction to a GPU that it's gonna compete with that doesn't exist yet or doesn't exist in that market sector anyway. The 12 gigs of VRAM is uh, nice for applications that require more VRAM, but still, I think, this is one's a bit of a head scratcher. And I just have a feeling that uh, this is only gonna be the beginning of all the weirdness that we're gonna see in 2021 with hardware. Anyways, what do you guys think about the 3060? I, I, <laughs> I feel like this one's really, really weird. We've got some DLSS stuff that we're gonna use the 3060 for that's gonna show this card in a bit of a different light, but not every title supports DLSS right now. Other reviewers are gonna say different stuff to us, but that's always the case. No one ever agrees with what we say, but the 3060 is weird. It is, it is weird, like 12 gigs of VRAM on a, yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do, hit the dislike button twice, or if you liked it, you can hit the dislike button twice as well. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available on Patreon. If you wanna get early access to videos, not like this one, but our regular videos, or on float plane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and the 3060. What a very odd, strange card. I don't know how I feel about it just yet. <laughs> uh, I, I suspect that the drivers with Linux are probably gonna get a lot better. And that's the thing, with Linux and these new GPUs, most of the time we don't have to update the driver. We can use the one that we used for testing before because Linux isn't as picky with driver IDs and device IDs like Windows is, so they usually just work. But I suspect that it's gonna be a bit more optimized a little bit later on down the line. And Nvidia's been pretty good with Linux support lately, so let's see what happens. Thanks for watching.